Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to the channel. I'm Cheryl and this is True Crime and Other Stuff. Thanks for being here where I like to bring you the facts about true crime, the missing, current events, or anything I find interesting or important. Today, we're going to talk about the mysterious disappearance of a 13-year-old girl named Lee Ochi. It was really hard to find information on this little girl missing, nobody knows, but her half-sister did a documentary with a podcast that was pretty good, and I have a clip at the end of a friend who went to school with her and some things he had to say. Blood was found in three different locations throughout the house, the daughter's bedroom, the hallway, and the kitchen. It gives us the feeling that there was an uh, act of violence there. That's, that's all we know right now. Of course, that would tell anybody that uh, foul play was probably involved, but uh, nothing indicating uh, that there was a car in or around the area. Please go out and search your property. Um, have your neighbors and friends go search their property so that we can find my daughter. Lee, if you're out there and you can see this, please contact us. No matter what, just please let us know if you're all right. Is the other side of the family, meaning um, Lee's mother and, and stepfather, are they going to join you all in any of these searches? Have you heard? Not that I'm aware of. If they did it, if they do, it's going to be a surprise to me. Lee Marine Ochi, born August 21st, 1979 mysteriously vanished as a teenager at her home in Tupelo, Mississippi during Hurricane Andrew. Her mother Vicki Felton returned home on the morning of August 27, 1992 to find Lee missing and evidence of blood in the house. Searches in and around Tupelo proved fruitless. On September 9, 1992, Ochi's eyeglasses were mailed to her home in an envelope addressed to her ex-stepfather. Law enforcement deemed this action a ruse to distract detectives in the search efforts. In November 1993, a human skull discovered in a soybean field was enormously attributed to Ochi, but this link was later retracted and the skull was positively identified as that of an adult woman who had gone missing in an, another town. And while I watched this documentary that her half-sister made, I did learn that the mother failed a polygraph test three times and that she would harass so much she moved out of the state of Mississippi. The thing I remember talking about is um, when she would come and get on the bus with the bruises on her legs. And that's when she was sitting on the bus with me and I would see him on legs. She wear like a dress or shorts. I'm like, what happened? And she'd always say, oh, it's I fell or bought them to this, something like that, to that nature. But I always felt like it was something different, like it was something at home that was going on. She just never would say, this happened, that happened. And she got on the bus one time with a big black guy. I'm like, what happened? I'm like, the horse kicked me. Then all of a sudden, I was like, a horse kicked me. And all of a sudden, like the other kids started asking, Whoa, what happened? You know, they see a little kid get on the bus with like a whole side of face about black and blue. Everybody wants to know what happened. I just remember teachers looking, like talking, but I just don't remember anybody doing anything about it. And that kind of bothered me. That was a lot on kids to see her face like that. But that was coming after the bruises here, bruises here, bruises here, bruises here. And like, I'm like, I know these teachers see this. Like, this. And then like the eye thing, I'm like, they should have took her in the guidance office right then. Like, they should have had um, whatever the, the case workers or whatever to come check that out and go to her house and see what was going on because that's a child with, like, with more than one bruise on them. Like somebody needs to be asking some questions. I just feel like, man, like I was a kid then. If I knew what I knew now, <laughs> I would have called the police myself, you know. She always had an excuse for it. She had reasons and the horse 
when she when she had the big black eye and she said the horse kicked her, that threw everybody off, all the classmates like, nah. I don't care how young or how what your mental mentality was, slow or, or smart, you know a horse didn't kick this girl. Yeah. And that's when everybody was like, something's up, something's happening. You would think that's when the police would have came and been asking questions on campus. That's when social workers would have been there. That wasn't the case, and then she disappeared. Boom. I was showing it on the news, and like, I was like, ah, uh, you know, maybe it's just something. That, you know, maybe she ran away or something because I figured she was getting hit. Oh my God, maybe she ran away. She finally got tired. She gonna run away. All this gonna be solved, but she probably gonna move. I'm thinking like that. I never was thinking like we would never find her. If you had anybody in, her, in the class that knew her, almost everybody did. They knew whatever happened happened at home. I still get emotional even just thinking about it. I see that sweet little face, a little blonde hair, like the little voice, John. I'm like, get on the sound with me. We'll be all right. Anybody's gonna mess with you and getting dropped off at the house. And I remember sometimes she'd get dropped off. I'm like, I don't know what's going on there, but I pray for her, you know? I pray that she, she's all right, everything works out all right. It's just something that, I'm sorry. Okay. Please like, subscribe, and share. And thanks for watching my videos. Have a good one.